What's up slash K? You remember when was the last time we had a decent inner woods nope thread going? Hikers, hunters, explorers, inner woods re operators share with us your creepy encounters, mysterious events you've had in forests across the world. Keep it classy, slash K, keep most common, bullsh copy pastas out of this one. I'll be the first one to share a story with you, not very much of frightening, but I'm still curious what happened back then. Two weeks ago, Eastern Europe, early at night. At my friend's place, he lives maybe 50 to 70 meters from nearest wooded area, outskirts of a small town. We're in a group of three, drinking some booze, sh is cash generally. Going out for a sig in a backyard, friends stay inside being worthless non-smokers. See a guy in a distance, right behind backyard's fence, Light from the porch can't reach him so I can only see a silhouette, I figure out he watches me thinking I could see him. Think nothing of it because alcohol, get back inside when finished smoking. 30 minutes later, despite listening to good old Leonard Skinner we all hear female, probably, blood curdling scream coming from the wooded area. At first do nothing. Seconds later, superheroes mode on cause alcohols, alright? We go outside. Host arms himself with Tikka T3 he uses for hunting, I grab a metal poker from the fireplace, the other dude goes unarmed. We sneak up to the edge of the woods, when friend tries to open a gate in the fence, suddenly someone on the other side of the fence we didn't notice before starts running. We get spooked out and come back into the house. Next day around noon, we notice police searching through the forest. They tell us to stay out of the woods. Das end. Your turn. Jeep man's OC. Me, bro and close friend go on three week hikes slash camping trips in glorious Pennsylvania mountains. Have trip and trails planned out and all the gear packed. Always bring guns, I take AK, pistol and Glock 22. Bro has nugget and .357. Friend has set me .308 and 1911. Get to first mark camp for the night, arrive late. Setting up camp in dark moonlight, very creepy. See large bonfire off in distance. Ignore it, since we're not that far from another trail. Camp set up and ready to make a fire. Hear loud groaning followed by animal screeches. Coming from area of large fire. Goes from screeches to bloody screams. That doesn't sound good. Bro says we should go see in case it was an animal attack. Creep up with rifles, get about 150 yards away from large fire and see a group of about 40 plus people. All circled around a bunch of deer tied up. Everyone is in a dark red cloak. Some are drinking blood from the deer, others are stabbing them. Hear chanting. We all look at each other, it's a f***ing satanic cult. Quickly and quietly go back to our camp and tear the f***er down. Move camp as far as we could go to where the bonfire is a speck off in the distance. Sleep in a large leafy tree taking shifts sleeping. Morning comes, last night f***ing sucked. Didn't get to cook last night and we didn't plan on cooking once we were up. We all agree to quietly go check out their camp, make sure it's safe to continue our trip. Leave gear tied up in tree. Get back to our old campsite and slowly approach the cult's site. F***ing blood everywhere. Several deer bodies hog tied and f***ing ripped to shreds. Pentagrams everywhere, around each deer body and on every tree circling around their camp. Mark down site to report. Hear footsteps off in the distance. See one man about 80 feet away in one of the cloaks from last night. Starts chanting some satanic shit. Pulls a bottle from his cloak and starts throwing what appears to be blood. We all start running. Hear him shouting we will find you. Get back to camp grab our shit and run to one of the main highly traveled trails just to avoid shit. Get to main trail, had to bag our rifles. Normally this trail is lit up on a Friday afternoon, there should be people everywhere. Not a f***ing soul to be found. Something is not right. Travel on main trail trying to get to our next checkpoint where ranger post is. Halfway there. Bro, you smell that? Smell of burning skin slash fur slash hair. See dark smoke off the trail a little. 
Well this is f***ing great. More occult shit, more blood everywhere. Dead bear half on fire burning away. See a few cultists trailing behind us. Brother is getting skittish, takes Nugget out of bag and fires three rounds in their direction. They run off. We get about three quarters of the way to the ranger post. Hear screaming, sounds like a person. F*** I'm done with this shit. AK comes out, Glock gets loaded with 22 round mag and plus ammo. Hear ladies screaming and calling for help. Find her, she is tied to a f***ing tree, she's all bloody and bruised. Untie her, say come with us ranger post isn't far. See ranger post, thank god. Truck is outside. Means someone is there. Start yelling we need some help. Two rangers come running out with guns drawn. WTF faces on all of us. They see the girl and ask what happened. Explain the whole cult thing. Rangers say they know but aren't able to locate them, have teams out looking. They say all the trails got closed down due to five hikers gone missing. Girl is one of the hikers. Give rangers the location of the camps we saw and say cult was following us. Rangers say we have to spend the night due to cult cutting down trees on the driving path. F***ing great. Night time comes and rangers get a fire going outside. One in the morning, get a call over their radio that one of the ranger teams has found their site. Three rangers come back to the post. Hear them talking. They found one of the missing hikers dead, missing his hands with cut marks everywhere. We ended up getting flown to a station in one of the towns the next day. Asked a ton of questions by police. Guns got taken away for seven days due to not being allowed on the trails. Try to avoid that trail area from now on. I posted my nope encounter on slash x last week, but it seems more slash k related than slash x, since slash x is all fairy tales and rainbows, so I'll post it here too. Nope, rise of the nope. B18. Friend's uncle takes me and him fishing for first time. Rocky Mountains. About a 40 minute hike from the nearest dirt road where we parked. Start fishing at about 7 a.m. Nothing seems out of the ordinary. Dog with us seems disturbed by something a little ways down the river from us. Dog is a German Shepherd, retired police dog and trained hunting dog. Dog spends most of afternoon acting sheepish and staring at spot across the river from us with its ears back and eyes wide, about 40 meters to our 10 o'clock to be more precise. Sun starts to go behind trees. Decide to pack it in for the day. Everything is packed up and good to go, except for dog. Dog is still staring at that same spot with a scared look and not moving. Uncle grabs dog by collar and tries to drag it with us. Thunk. Hear loud noise from where the dog was staring at and hear rustling in trees. Dog starts barking and snarling, trying to chase it. Dog gets loose and crosses river. Everyone drops what they are carrying and wade across river after it. Finally get to dog and find it barking at very large rock. Notice very large indent in ground a few meters away where rock was picked up from before being dropped near. Notice broken branches leading off into the forest away from broken rock. Notice hole in bushes that has a direct line of sight to where we were fishing all day. No back across the river. Uncle carrying dog over shoulder as it continues to bark and snarl at a different spot this time. Grab rifles rods and cooler and march our way back to vehicles, dog barking entire time while looking behind us. Make it home and never go fishing again. I wasn't there for this one, so just going by what friend and his dad told me. Friend goes back to same spot with uncle, dad and a couple other friends for a camp out slash fish slash hunt. Bring large camping trailer and park it in a clearing in the woods about halfway between road and river. Spend day fishing, drinking, shooting the shit around a campfire, nobody paying attention to dog. Spend the night in trailer and notice that dog isn't there. Everyone is worried that dog went exploring but expects that he will find his way back to the smell of the campfire. Next morning dog is still not back. Spend entire day searching for dog, screaming and combing area with rifles, in case of bears. No luck. 
light campfire for a dog but spend night inside trailer this time. Next morning rolls around. Not much sleep was had. Dog still missing. Spend afternoon searching again. Mood at campsite goes from optimistic to somber. Everyone decides to extend two night camping trip for a few more days in order to find dog. No one goes fishing, no one is drinking, no one is having fun anymore. Night comes again. Five people just huddled around a campfire and waiting. Hear loud crunching from trees. Everyone brings up rifle optics to see what it was. Too dark to see even with flashlights. Large rock is thrown at trailer scaring the piss out of everyone. Two shots are fired in the direction the rock came from to scare it off. Everyone piles into trailer. No sleep is had that night. Sun rises again for another dreadful day. Spend day in trailer playing cards and killing time waiting for dog. Nobody even mentions dog on this day. Late afternoon comes around. Everybody tired from sleepless night. Everyone in bed by supper time. Night comes once again. Everybody is awake and ready this time. Rifles and flashlights aim out windows. Let's do this dot jpeg. Uneventful night, everybody getting bored. Hear one soft clang against the door. Sounded nothing like rocks being thrown the night before. Everybody stays at their window. High powered flashlights flick on and scan every angle around the trailer. Nothing. Morning finally comes. Only eventful part of the night was soft clang against the metal door and smell of pants being filled. Dad opens door and steps out of trailer. Crunch. Steps on jawbone. Dog's jawbone. Everybody weeps, packs up and heads home. Friend and his dad have little memorial of dog in backyard and wooden statue of him on fireplace mantle. Friend's uncle ends up selling his vacation cabin just a few kilometers away from campsite and never goes back to hunt or fish there again. Me and two other bros camping in the woods of the Pacific Northwest about a year ago. It was a weekend that was supposed to relieve us of our stress. A weekend to drink, wheel, shoot, and have fun like no other. Anyway we decide to go down this old ass logging road and go to a camping spot. Get stuck and get lost multiple times trying to find my buddy's perfect spot. Get there about 6 or 7. We get a fire going and start roasting some hot dogs cause, hey, we're f***ing hungry. Just about to open some brews when we hear the sound of vehicles. Lots of vehicles. I look at my friend John and say hey, you are leading. Did you see any other vehicles out here? Looks at me and he shakes his head. Okay, whatever, anyway, eating our dogs and drinking our brews having a merry old time. Getting cold out so we douse the fire and start to hit the hay. My friend Nate sleeps outside his Tacoma freezing his ass off in a mummy sleeping bag. Me and John hit the hay in our truck's cabs. Morning rolls around and we get to starting the fire again. Nate looks at both of us and says, did you guys hear anything last night? Like screaming? I'm thinking what the hell is he talking about? Me and John laugh and we're like, knock that shit off man it ain't funny. Nate is like nah guys, I for sure f***ing heard screaming at about 11 last night. Me and John look at each other and look at Nate. I say dude don't f***ing joke about that sh man it's weird and creepy. Nate just shakes his head and I can for sure tell he's freaked out. John speaks up and says, Well boys if we're gonna be in a screaming woods, might as well be armed, right? Me and Nate laugh and are like, F yeah get out the arsenal. We get a count. Among us we had two shotguns, a pistol, an FNFAL, SKS, and a AR. We're acting all hot sh cause we think we're protected from the screaming. Anyway we go about our day shooting shit and willing with drinking in between. Fun as hell day but when we get back to camp the mood changes. We all drive on it and shit is raided. We dismount and take stock. Nate's sleeping bag is gone and our lamps are gone. Food is strewn everywhere but not taken mind you. WTF do they want? What made us really shit bricks was sitting by a tree. A dead gutted and mutilated deer and the tree it was sitting by had a pentagram drawn in f***ing blood. 
that feel when your gut churns and there's that somber thought that you know you're not welcome out here. We sobered up real f***ing quick. Nate's like we need to get the f*** out of here man. Me and John are like f*** that, we're staying bro. He's on the verge of f***ing crying and we're like, bro don't be a pussy. Starts fucking yelling at us that we're crazy and should leave. We look at him and say, dude, if you want to leave just leave. He does, roars the f*** out of there in his truck. We should have left but my god we were cocky. Night rolls around and we start a fire again. We sit loaded and ready to go. Whatever the f*** is out here can come damn well get us. I sit facing out towards the forest from the fire. F.A.L. in hands. John does the same with his SKS. We're talking back and forth when all of a sudden we hear the screaming as well. The moment the screaming started the woods got real damn quiet. Not even a cricket was chirping. It dawned on us this was no animal. It was a human scream. A girl. Once in a while the screaming would die down and you would hear chanting. Cultists for sure and from the pentagram were dealing with Satanists. Now I know you're thinking why the f didn't we get out of there like Nate did? Simple answer me and John are f***ing tards. Trust me when I say this, it was a learning experience and now, well, we're not as cocky. Anyway. John pats me on the back and I jump. WTF do you want man? Fucking look bro. He says as he turns ghost white. Through the trees and the foliage we see light. From what looks to be a bonfire. Me and John the twits we were doused our fire and headed in the direction of the other one. We creep through the woods and come to an old landing. We see a group of 30 plus gathered around this massive f***ing fire. Women, children, old people, and some men dressed in crimson robes. On only what can be described as a stone dash laid a girl. Looked to be about 18, skinny and blonde. Screaming the whole while to these people to let her go she was writhing and crying on the days. Lo and behold out comes an old man dressed in robes of dark black. Seemed like they just absorbed the light itself but in his hand was a knife. Now I'm shitting fucking bricks at this point. Muscles feel like jelly and I just want to run. Go back to town and forget we saw fucking anything at all. I whisper to John let's get the fuck out of here man. I start tugging on his shoulder to go when he waves me off and points to the old guy. The guy now has the knife fully raised above his head and is yelling his fucking gibberish. John looks at me and says back me up, okay? What the actual f bro? John step out of the woods and cracks off a shot over the head of the man in black. Every f***ing head whips around to look straight at me and him. They start screaming at us and coming slowly at me and John. I crack off a shot over the head of some dude in crimson. The mob stops and the dude in black comes to the front. In the most guttural and human f***ing voice these two will do. The man is flanked by the guys in crimson now. They're all brandishing weapons now and start inching closer. John pops off another shot. The man in black says no one is here to help you now I hope you know that and smiles. I'm gonna call him black robes from now on. Now I'm saying a joker-esque smile. Ear to f***ing ear. John yells something to the effect of stay the f*** away and time seems to sew down at this point. John's SKS barks, round flies through the air and hits black robes in the legs. Dude hits the ground screaming. Crimson robes hesitate as they see their leader fall. Start advancing again. I put a round through a crimson robe shoulder and he hits the dirt. Dude's hoods comes down as he hits. Dude is a fatty. John screams stay the f back. Guys stops. They look visibly shaken as we have a good old Mexican standoff. Redhead and black robes are screaming for help now. The kid Satanist are wailing. A line of women is standing behind the crimson robes screaming at us. My body is flooded with adrenaline at this point. Let's f***ing rock and roll I'm thinking. Screaming, crying, and mewling of children is all that I hear. Something breaks to the fore of it all. Sirens. F***ing sirens out here. John and I are still yelling at these people to stay the f*** back and release the girl. The red host starts inching forward again. 
John looks at me and I hear him clear as f***ing day say shoot to wound. He takes a step forward and pops a crimson in the chest and takes some girl in the leg. I follow alongside him. FNFAL barking as I either shoot for legs or shoulders. Lights everywhere. Screaming. Everything goes black as I get tackled by a f***ing cop. Wake up handcuffed next to a f***ing cop car. Look to my right and see John. Smiles back at me and says, we f***ing saved her bro. Look into the field and see people getting ferried out of there and into ember lamps or cop cars. Blonde is escorted into a cop car. One face is noticed out of them all however. It's f***ing Nate. Cops follow him as he walks up to us. Yeah these are the other two I was telling you about. Cops nod and place us in separate cars. Go back to town. Now this is where the story ends. We essentially got off scot f***ing free thanks to the blonde's testimonial. Nate's testimonial helped out our case as well. Actually the whole town practically came to our defense seeing as this was actually a frequent thing up in those hills. Apparently a lot of people have seen the sh** these people do and didn't fess up to it till then. By the way if it helps I still have that FNFAL in my god am I not getting rid of it. Be me and my two brothers. Be all in our early 20s. Be about 5 years ago. Decide to take the ATVs out in the woods for a few nights of camping, hunting, and general gunnery. Grandfather owns a farm that backs up to mountains. Mostly it's private property there, so no hikers or recreationalists. No one patrols the area so we do whatever the hell we want up there. First night out we come across a huge abandoned brick building. Collapsed walls and no roof, looks unsafe. Decide to make camp outside. Later that night, we're telling ghost stories and Sean, older brother, dares my younger brother, Zach, to go in the building. After a lot of arguing, I end up tagging along. We can figure out what the building used to be, no traces of a fire, but the construction seems modern to the past 60 years. Most of the doors are long rotted away so we can check out almost every room, pretty much empty, though some rooms have metal bed frames inside. No skeletons, no old torture devices, nothing worth writing about. In the floor of one of the back rooms is one door and the floorboards, looks like a cellar, that's still locked and we can't get open. We can feel cold air rushing out around the edges, a cave? I look at Zach, and he looks at me. Both of us hear faint, but distinct noises like somebody muttering behind the door. We realize our flashlights must be visible on the other side of the door. Voices stop at the same time. We nope the f out of there. Shitting our pants, we rush back outside to report to Sean on what we saw. Sean has his point .303 drawn and is pointing into the woods just beyond our campsite. Ask what the f he's doing. Says nothing doesn't lower rifle at this moment hear noises like a voice muttering just out of sight in the woods shine flashlight but can see anything voice stops when flashlight hits a particularly dense thicket of trees lower flashlight voice starts up again but louder and more insistent sean meg dumps in the direction of the thicket reloads and meg dumps again when my ears stop ringing I realize that either there's a lot of wind right now or there are a lot of things moving out in the woods. Can't feel any wind in the air. Have the feeling that I'm being watched by many, many things out there. Hear an ATV being started up in the engine revving. Suddenly realize Zack is nowhere to be seen. Zack drives up on his ATV and tells us to get our sh** together, he's getting out of there. Me and Sean don't bother getting our sh** together and leave camp the way it is. Both of us mount our ATVs, stowing our rifles and we are on our way back to the farm in the next minute. Engines are just too loud to hear anything else in the woods. Get to the second of two water crossings, and Zach's ATV dies midstream. Water is deep enough to almost cover all four wheels. First thought is that water got in the air intake. He tries to start it, but the engine doesn't even turn over. Water in the engine for sure. Moonlight is slightly shining through the trees, illuminating the stream now. 
we can see Zach's ATV, right in the middle of the creek. As me and Sean dismount and are talking about how we're going to tow the water log ATV out of the stream, three things happen very fast. We hear some sort of blood-curdling roar, from the direction of the trail behind us, but very close. A small tree falls into the creek only about 50 yards upstream of us, not from the same direction of the roar. Zach, hearing and seeing the above two events, jumps off the ATV and tries to wade to shore, but because the current is relatively swift, and the cobble-sized rocks on the creek bottom are slick with algae, he slips, hits his head on his own ATV, goes under, and next thing we know, he surfaces a little ways downstream, floating face down. As I'm shitting my pants in rapid succession for the fourth, fifth and sixth times that night, Sean jumps into the creek like a hero and semi-swims, semi-floats, semi-runs, splashing down the shallow waterway to save our little brother. It's at this point that I realize that the down tree has been floating downstream this whole time. It collides with Zach's stuck ATV. Zach's ATV comes unstuck. Both tree and ATV drift slash grind downstream. Zach and Sean go around a bend and are now out of sight. I start up my ATV and drive downstream along the shore toward them. Long story short, my ATV now gets stuck in deep mud and I'm on foot running and splashing downstream to where I think they are. Can't see shit except scattered reflections on the water. No flashlight. No rifle. All I am sure of is that the down tree and Zach's ATV are still grinding very slowly towards me from somewhere upstream. Suddenly come around a bend and see them. Both are on the same side bank as me, just close enough to make out what they are doing by the moonlight. Sean is huddled over Zach's body on a gravel bar, and administering CPR. Don't freak out since Sean has been a lifeguard, and I know that Zach is in good hands. Suddenly I become aware of movement in the woods between me and them. Can't see shit in the darkness, but it sounds like a whole family of things moving slowly toward my two brothers. Try to call out. Can't. Voice no longer works. Devise plan to creep out into the middle of the creek and float down to where brothers are so the things don't see me. Try to put it into action. Hear rustling right behind me. Can't move. Something is walking deliberately towards me. Two somethings. Two bipedal somethings. One of the somethings touches my back. I jump about 10 feet into the air, slip, fall, float, flail and eventually swim to the shore. When I look up, Sean and Zach are standing right there. I look downstream to the gravel bar I saw them on before. Nothing there. Sean says he pulled Zach out of the creek upstream and then they saw me drive past on my ATV. They followed until they found it stuck on the bank, and eventually found me standing here. Asks Sean if he gave Zach CPR. Says he didn't have to, Zach hit his head, but didn't lose consciousness. Many things don't add up, but we agree to GTFO of the woods as quick as we can. Everybody piles onto Sean's ATV like we're some Asian family and we eventually make it out of the woods into the farm. After a few days, we decide to go back to get our stranded ATVs and abandoned camping gear. We start out very early in the morning so as not to end up anywhere after dark, and we all go heavily armed and with lots of heavy rope for towing stuck ATVs. Can't find either ATV, but when we get to the campsite, all of our gear is packed up neatly and considerately in a big pile. It's broad daylight, but we all have the distinct feeling we're being watched. We pack up the gear and nope the fuck out of there, and never go back. Five years wasn't that long ago, and we talk about going back there all the time, but to this day, none of us has ever had the balls to seriously propose a trip back there. From the other thread. Be young and mostly inexperienced in Inwoods horseshit, probably 20 years ago. Be out in the woods in a national park camping with two buddies. Be armed with several firearms. Shush, don't tell. Spend three days out in the rough with no incidents. Caught lots of fish, didn't see anything out there that walked on two or four feet. Fourth night, hear scrabbling and rough noises near campsite. Next morning. Find all sorts of tracks that encircle campsite. Mostly deer and some odd tracks that look like a predator. 
park ranger comes through camp and warns us to not use plastic bags for trash, but to bury or burn it as long as it is organic. Keep the rest of the shit in the truck. Several sightings of mountain lion who has come down from the hills and is prowling local camps. Day 6 and we find portions of a deer carcass, blood, and a lot of broken branches and shit about 50 yards from our camp. Night of day 6 we hear more scrabbling and even something like a growl. Flashlights go on, everybody has either a pistol or a shotgun in their hand. See glowing eyes. They blink once, then disappear. Nope 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 nope. As we were noping back to the truck and noping the f out of there, hear another growl right next to the truck. Get in truck, lock doors, turn truck on and start driving. On the dirt path, see one mountain lion right in the road and sets of eyes in the forest on both sides of the dirt road. My face when we managed to camp right in the middle of a mother mountain lion's domain a few months after she had birthed a litter. To this day, even my house cat's glowing eyes sometimes scare the shit out of me if I see them out of the corner of my eye at the right time. Yet another stupid teen story from my youth. Be up on Lake Erie. Spending a week in a cabin on Middle Base Island. Get wasted in many of the bars and wine gardens in Put-in Bay. Decided would be a great idea to go water skiing. Whoops, it's 7 p.m. and the sun is going down. Fuck it, let's do it. Hook up all the sh and take a shitty boat out onto the lake. Boat's top speed is probably 40 miles per hour without a skier. Get up on two skis and start skiing. Think it would be a good idea to drop ski and slalom for a bit before it turns pitch black out on the lake. The boat cannot handle slalom and I am basically being dragged behind the boat as I slowly sink. Feel something hit my ski hard. Stupidly let go of tow rope and yell for my buddies to come back and pick me up. Feel something strong bump into my leg, but when I check it, all I see is a scrape. Boat pulls around and my buddies are yelling at me to move my ass. Why? They tell me there is a cloud of spotted gar right where I am treading water. Some of them are at least two feet long. Nope 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 nope. As I am noping out of the water, a gar has latched onto my bathing suit and we drag it into the boat. F*** these f***ers, let's fish. Spend the rest of the night trying to catch gar and drinking more beer. We all pass out with five or six fish caught. Oh, they are still alive. Imagine waking up on a boat and finding a really angry predator fish who has 6,000 needle teeth and has not died, in your cooler while you are hung over. Solo hiking slash camping trip in the Ozarks. First night there's a big storm. Camping on a treeless mountain top, if anyone is familiar with Goggins Mountain, you know what I'm talking about. Can see storm rolling in the whole evening decide to get the fuck off the top of the mountain. There can be lots of tornadoes in this area when there's a big enough storm. Car is only five and one half miles away, decide to pack it in and end the trip early. Storm hits after about a mile of hiking, just as it's getting dark. Headlamp is running low on batteries, decides to die at this moment. Nighttime in the Ozarks under a massive storm is entirely dark. Lots of lightning but it's not frequent enough to illuminate the path. Come up with plan C, decide to make camp right there on the side of the trail. Surprising myself, I managed to unpack my tent without getting my sleeping bag wet, and set it up in the dark. Pass night in relative comfort. Get a little wet from water flowing over the ground seeping into the tent. Don't get a lot of sleep, am awake when the first light of dawn brightens up the forest. Next morning, the trail and the forest floor around my campsite is pure mud. Looking at my footprints on the trail, and realize the tread is different. Somebody walked down the trail while I was sleeping and passed within inches of my tent without me hearing them. Freakiest part is the footprints circled around my tent and stopped at the door, as though to look inside. Be North Carolinian. Doing week camp out with buddies in midwinter Michigan. Oh, why is it so cold? Fall on my ass five plus times. Be sleeping, wake up after hearing noise and exiting tent. Hey, 
Hey Nate, wake up. The f is that noise? He's groggy as f grabs his SKS. Oh, they're just coyotes, relax man. F why are your coyotes so huge? Look into woods a minute more, Nate's leaking. Out of nowhere. Bam 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 bam. Sh my pants, run to him, everyone is running from their tents. Nate's there, something big and black in front of him, he's shaking with his dick hanging out. Oh Christ guys I f***ing swear it was charging me. Get flashlight out, shine on it. It's a f***ing black bear, dead in its tracks. Buddies give some coffee to Nate, he's scared shitless still. Get the call in, justified killing of bear. Camp out another night. Scariest time of my life. This is a story of a guy I met in the woods, and a few friends of his. I can guarantee anything as to its accuracy. I'm just going on what he told me to be true. Be friend and a couple buddies. Head out on the Highline Trail in Utah Zoo and his mountains for a week. Have enough cars in the group so as to be able to park one at each end of the trail. Everybody is excited to be out in the mountains together. Not long before weird things to start happening. It starts out with things like hiking poles and backpacks end up at opposite sides of camp to where people left them. Everybody's boots are upside down in the morning. They hang their food bags on certain trees at night, but find them tied to certain other trees in the mornings. Most people brush this stuff off as animals, or someone in their group getting a midnight snack. Weirder and weirder shit starts happening. My friend wakes up to find muddy handprints all over the inside of his tent fly, in between the inner tent and the fly. As they're hiking, they lose the trail only to backtrack and find large, freshly cut branches and clever disguise laid over the actual trail. People are starting to think that they're being stalked. What really starts freaking people out is waking up to find their tents rearranged in their campsite. The stakes of the non-freestanding tents look like they're all undisturbed, but the tents are all in different places around camp. Nobody has any idea how their tents could have been all moved around, and in some cases apparently broken down and re-pitched, with none of them noticing or waking up. Next night, they decide to keep watch in three-hour shifts. Everyone is on edge. Watchmen get thick branches, tie knives to the ends, and arm themselves with bear mace. The first half of the night, nothing happens. Then it's my friend's turn to stand watch. He's got his camera because he figures the flash can illuminate wide areas if something comes close. It doesn't matter, though, because he falls asleep just before dawn, and nothing happens that night. Next morning, somebody asks him why he was taking pictures the last night. My friend freezes, slowly takes out his camera, checks the memory. There's pictures of everybody in the group sleeping, including himself. My friend is shitting his pants right now. They're 40 miles from their car, though technically only about 18 miles from the nearest trailhead if they were to hitchhike out. All pretty much guaranteed to spend at least one more night camping out. He decides to keep quiet about the pictures and they continue on their trip. Over the last few days of the trip, things get stranger and stranger. It doesn't matter who they post to nighttime lookout duty, the watchman always falls asleep. The next morning, everybody wakes up somehow on the ground outside of their tents. The following morning, they all wake up in a strange meadow, out of sight of their campsite entirely. It's at this point that my friend decides to share what he saw on his camera two days earlier. They all huddle around his camera, and to their horror they discover new pictures, some of them taken very close to people's faces. The last picture is a picture of my friend's sleeping face, but there's a bone white hand cupping his chin. By following a creek a little ways upstream, they are able to find the trail, which someone recognizes as being not too far from their campsite. They only have 12 miles to go before they get to the trailhead, but it's early afternoon, and they're doubtful they can finish their trip that same day. Reaching their campsite, they find all of their gear shredded in pieces. Apparently, only one backpack was unharmed. They find where their food had been hung, scooped up as much as they could save from where it was scattered on the ground, somebody luckily finds the car keys, and they run the rest of the way back, 
getting lost several times, but reaching the trailhead before dark. When they finally get to the trailhead, everyone is too exhausted to make camp or do any driving, so all six of them just pile into the car, lock the doors, and fall asleep. A knock on their window wakes them up early the next morning. It's the police, and the cop wants to know what these people are doing in a closed area. As they try to explain the situation, the cop tells his own story. The entire entrance to the forest had been closed for days due to abnormal animal activity. My friend is getting suspicious why the police are handling the closure and not the forest rangers. He asks as much. Cop goes quiet and looks away. Very awkward moment, which is interrupted by one of my friend's hiking companions in the car. He notices that there are about a dozen other cars in the parking lot, but they all have flat tires. Everybody gets out of the car, and they realize that their own tires are flat. At this point, the cop comes clean and explains that there's actually a manhunt in the area, but they're not sure what exactly they're dealing with. Lots of dead hikers turned up earlier in the week. My friend remembers the strange photos and gets out his camera to show the cop. The cop's face suddenly goes blank, and he hands back the camera. It's a photo that was taken inside the car the night before. Partially visible in the last photo, which is of my friend's sleeping face, like some kind of party photo where the taker holds the camera at arm's length to get himself in, is the right half of a pure white face with black holes for eyes and a mouth full of sharpened animal-like teeth. This is a story of my first hunting trip with my dad. Since it was out of season, I guess I should call it my first poaching trip. First, I'm from northern Minnesota. We don't have huge mountains, but we have tallish hills, our woods are dense, and there are a lot of lakes. Be about 18, just graduated high school. On first hunting trip with dad. Don't know what the hell I'm doing, so just follow my dad. We hike in the woods about 10 to 15 miles. We make camp by a big sinkhole. Dad says there's a lot of game trails around here. Deer all funnel in because there's water at the bottom, climb down for a drink, and then make a lot of noise climbing out. We make camp about a half mile away and wait until about midnight to move back to the sinkhole. Brought a huge 50,000 lumen spotlight. I'm on spotlight duty, Dad is on rifle duty. Here twig snap. We look at each other and get ready to move into position. Before we split, dad grabs my shirt. It is at this moment that he informs me that we're not out there to hunt deer. Turn on spotlight, and point it toward the snap twig I just heard. At first, only see trees. Then realize that I'm looking at a mix of trees in very hairy, tree-colored, shaggy legs. Turn the spotlight upward. 30 or 40 feet above us are two gigantic faces. Big green eyes the size of dinner plates stare back at us. Gaping mouths that could probably swallow us both without chewing. Empty out my breakfast, lunch, and dinner into my pants. Suddenly hear, pop, pop. As dad Meg dumps into the nearest one. Crappy spotlight is getting dimmer, and I realize that five minutes have passed, the light flickers a few times. Shake flashlight, entire thing goes out. When I get it back on, my dad grabs me by the collar and is dragging me away. We head back for our campsite. I become acutely aware that what I'd previously thought to be the wind rustling the trees almost directly above us was accompanied by a pair of heavy footfalls behind us. We pick up the pace and are sprinting as fast as we can without spraining our ankles. Have no idea what the f*** is going on. We seem to have lost the legs. Get back to camp, grab a few essentials. Dad has his pack slung over one shoulder and is frantically rifling through the contents. He finds what he was looking for, a full magazine, loads up his gun, and tells me on the count of three to point the spotlight, which has started to work again. One, two, three. We both turn around, and I turn on the spotlight. Too long. Hairy legs leading up into the treetops are inelegantly stumbling toward us, closing in fast. 20 feet, 15 feet, 12. Dad aims up where he guesses the thing's head is and dumps another 15 rounds in it. 
The thing lets out a high-pitched scream and suddenly its legs just stop all motion. Somehow all the hair hanging off them now doesn't look like hair anymore, it looks like bark. Dad is pulling me to go, I can stop looking at the two new trees that are now indistinguishable from any other trees. Shine spotlight upwards, but don't see any green eyes, don't see any gaping mouth. We hightail out of there. Dad won't talk about what the hell happened, and nobody believes me when I try to tell them. To this day, he still pretends like it never happened. Be in the woods, off trail, but in territory not too far from my house that I'm very familiar with. Be by myself, but walking my two dogs. Leisurely Sunday evening, getting dark soon. Suddenly dark shape off in the distance. Both dogs break into a run in pursuit. Turns out to be a black bear, which zips up a tree at top speed as soon as my dogs get close. Have a good laugh because both my dogs combined are only about one-fifth of the bear's weight. Dogs are barking at the bottom of the tree. Bear is bleeding like a bitch up in the lower branches. I keep laughing, take off my backpack to get out my camera. Suddenly notice that dogs have stopped barking. Look up and see them frozen in place under the tree, ears down, tails straight and still. Bears bleeding suddenly get more frantic, it climbs a dozen feet higher up into the tree. Call dogs, they sling over to me. Dogs are high pitch whining and giving me the look they give me when they're inside the house but need to go outside. What the f is going on? Treed bear still going ape shit. Decide to f off ASAP. Put my pack back on and head back the way I came. Following a dry creek bed with a steep hill to one side. Suddenly hear a huge crashing sound through the brush. Look up, and there is a gigantic animal, brown bear. Bounding uphill, and away from me. Before I can figure out what happened, it's gone behind a dense thicket of trees and bushes. Freak the f out, but find some comfort in the fact that it was running away from me. Collect myself and continue on down the path through the creek bed again. Can't shake the feeling that I'm being watched. Before I've walked for another five minutes, a second huge animal makes a huge noise uphill. Branches cracking, leaves rustling, I'm amazed I can see the forest being torn apart from where I'm standing. It's so close, but all I see is the underbrush, thick, but undisturbed as before. This time it isn't running away, but just making a lot of noise just out of sight. Suddenly notice dogs are nowhere in sight. Oh sh! oh sh! oh shit. Can't remember last time I saw them, since they were slinging along so quietly in my shadow. Frozen in place, can't move. Try to call out to dogs. Voice comes out as a whisper and dies. Can't call dogs back. It's now almost dusk and without a flashlight I won't be able to find my way back to my car unless I leave the area now. Still a lot of noise just out of sight in the underbrush uphill. Thinking that the dogs must have gone to investigate this, I tactically double back, and approach it from an angle. Can't leave without my dogs. As I get closer, I notice patches of brownish liquid goo? On the forest floor. The light is fading fast. I've walked at least 50 yards uphill toward the sounds by now, but still can see sh I'm sure that I'm being watched. Whatever is making all the noise sounds like an elephant having a f***ing seizure. I'm shitting my pants by the time I start smelling it. It's like 20 years worth of deer piss and rotten meat, and it's suddenly overwhelming. I suppress the urge to throw up, and have to steady myself against a tree. Cold sweat all over. My shirt is now wet. Silence. My entire body is covered in goosebumps by now. I don't know how I know it, but something massively bigger than anything that should be in these woods is standing right behind me, looking down at me. Every hair on my body is standing on end. At some point, I start running, can't look back, I just run, and I start screaming. It is now completely dark. The only noise in the woods is my footsteps, no owls hooting, no crickets chirping, no coyotes baying, just the soil crunching underfoot. At some point that I can't remember, I leave the creek bed. Have literally no idea if I'm headed in the right direction. 
Cross creeks that shouldn't be there. Run around cliffs that I don't remember. Suddenly the flash of moonlight off my car windshield. Double my speed, get keys out of pocket. Dogs are at the car, hiding under the bumper. Open the side door, they launch themselves inside. I climb in, start it, and peel out onto the main road, not slowing down until I'm safely in my garage. Even in my garage, we all just sit there in the car, with the garage closed and the car doors locked, neither me nor the dogs make a sound. Eventually make our way inside. Dogs won't go outside alone for two days. Speaking of finding animal carcasses in the woods, I have a story about that. Be fly fishing around an alpine lake in a fairly remote part of my local range. The only people I've seen in the past two days were horse packers back on the main trail. Exchanged pleasantries with them, noticed they all seemed to have rifles. Passed it off as horse packers just being horse packers, they always overpack. Have no guns myself, just a backpack, camping gear, and fly fishing gear. Pulling in a lot of large fish today. The weather is nice. Thinking that I'll stay at this lake another night. Going around the shore, I come to a cove and almost step on a dead moose. Jump backwards about 10 feet because holy shit dead moose. Creep a little closer because cool man, it's a dead moose. Notice that Bullwinkle didn't die of natural causes. Something has been eating him. On closer inspection, his entire midsection is hollowed out. Scratch that, this moose looks like a victim of some top predator from the Serengeti. Notice fresh blood coating the soil. At this point, my brain starts doing what it should have done at first sight of a partially eaten animal. My eyes scan the surrounding trees. Did I scare somebody off when I came close? Am I being watched right now? Look down at the soil around the carcass hoping to find cougar tracks, but most of the dirt is lumpy and dry. All I can see are what look like bird tracks scratched into the muddiest, smoothest patches of the soil. Hundreds, and hundreds of bird tracks. The closer I look, the clearer the story becomes. I was looking for bear tracks, or mountain lion tracks. All I can see are bird tracks. My travel to the lake was cross-country, and I leave by a cross-country route in the opposite direction. Concluding that bears or mountain lions must have killed the moose, and crows had just moved in afterwards, I rest easy on a campsite away from water, halfway between that lake and the next lake I will fish. Next day, I reach a lake several times bigger than the previous day's lake. Fishing is average. It's cloudy and windy, and I lose interest in fishing. Wander off into the brush, but quickly come upon another carcass, this time of a fairly large bear. Oddly, its torso is untouched, but its legs are all chewed down to the bones. Bear looks like it walked on stilts. WTF ing hard. Acutely aware how alone I am in the woods right now. Out of nowhere, noises in the near distance. Sounds like weird babbling and footsteps. Can see the tops of half a dozen light brown organic things poking up over the brush. Have no clue what I'm looking at. Hide, and tactically hold my breath, try not to make any sound or movement. My pack and clothes are all natural colors, so I think I'm doing a pretty good job. Do have bear mace. Get that ready to deploy it at any second. The light brown things turn out to be the tops of people's cowboy hatted heads on their horses. It's one of the groups of horse packers I saw a few days ago. Get to chatting, and mention the bear on stilts. A few of them are very interested and want to see it. I guide a few of them back to where I thought it was, but can't find it. Must not have been paying attention when I wandered away from it. Then one of the guys takes me aside and explains what they saw over the past few days. Dead animals f***ing everywhere. Most were deer, a few moose. Some looked like they were eaten by mountain lions. Others looked like they'd been mutilated for fun. None of these people were sure what was killing these animals, other animals or a depraved human. They suspected it was some person doing it, but weren't able to find gunshot or arrow wounds on any of the animals. Though I've been on dozens of week-long in the woods trips in my life, 
and though I've always considered myself a reliable woodsman, and though I have a lot of pride for my independence, at that moment, I was scared for my life. At that moment, I just wanted to plead to the horse packers to let me into their group and let's get the f out of there. The way the conversation was going, I was sure they'd say okay if I asked. But somehow my pride kept me from asking. I came into the woods alone, and I was determined to leave the woods alone. Besides, the horse packers were probably exaggerating anyway, or so I figured at the time. Over the next several days, as I gradually made my way back to the trailhead, I saw no less than 63 dead deer, 13 dead moose, 2 dead bears, and 1 dead coyote slash wolf. I traveled cross country, and in a different direction than the horse packers came in from. Not even on a trail. No way it could have been done by a single deranged poacher. One of the moose was hanging limply over a thick tree branch, 20 plus feet in the air. That one seemed to still be breathing, but had given up on living. All, all of those carcasses were fresh, sometimes still bleeding out. Finally got to car, and got the hell out of there. Too scared to go back. I'm a reenactor too. Blanks flash like a bitch, more so than live ammunition. They're a lot noisier too. Blank firing adapters are easy as hell to get for any decently common firearm. They range from like $8 for com block surplus training BFAs for AKs and such, to $100 plus US made fancy low profile BFAs. I think you have a very vague understanding of how a blank works. A BFA doesn't plug the barrel, what it does is constrict it to about 3 millimeters. Speaking of BFAs, I have a somewhat related story. Be in the early 90s. Out doing World War II reenactment, on the German side as Fallschirmjägers. Good day of firefights, driving around in a Kabelwagen while in firefights, and napping during firefights. Night falls. Sitting around fire with Buddy, he was our machine gunner and I was his loader. He's got a semi-auto converted MG42 because he has far too much time and money on his hands. I have a carabiner 98k. Here, in a shitty German accent, Americaner, 12 o'clock. American airborne dude wanders out of the bushes in front of us. Quiet guy, we didn't hear or notice him tramping through the brush. The actual reenactment ended long ago, next engagement is tomorrow, so we don't light him up. He walks up to our campfire and sits down, and says, this time with a standard Pacific Northwest accent, Tim, wanna have a cigarette with me? My name is Dom, close enough. Wait why the hell is he addressing me by name, I've never even seen this dude before. Must be a new guy, the other Americans probably named us. Yeah, I moment. Produce cigarettes and matches. Hand a cigarette to him, and one to my buddy. Strike a match and light my own, then pass matches around. American dude is smoking hard, like taking a huge drag every second. Practically shoving the cigarette into his face. He's done with it in like 30 seconds. Drops the butt on the ground, doesn't extinguish it. I figure it's a combination of him probably being drunk, like us, and the long marches. After we finish our smokes, the dude just sits there and stares at the fire silently for like 5 minutes. So what's your name? Johan, you can call me John if you want. There's a guy on the American side named Johan who goes by John. Except this isn't him, and I've known the other Johan for like 3 years at this point. Hell of a coincidence, did you meet the other Johan? He just fucking smiles at us. Not even a smile. More like pulling his lips back like a growling dog. Hear a bunch of crashing in the bushes behind where Creepy John came out. American Airborne walks out of the bushes, visibly annoyed. Hey asshole, would you mind giving us back Tim's kit? That shit isn't cool. He's freezing, it's 35 degrees out. Looks over to us. And why the hell didn't you turn him around as soon as he got back here? I told you guys to stop letting teenagers into your group. Referring to an incident in which a drunk 16-year-old nearly burned down airborne number 2's tent. Drop German accents. 
we very rarely go out of character unless someone gets injured. Dude, we don't know this guy, we thought he was one of yours. Creepy dude is mock reloading his rifle. Like moving his hand over to his bandolier, not actually pulling anything out, and putting the nothing into the reach of his M1 rifle. Does this like three times while we all just f***ing stare at him. Suddenly Joe ults upright, starts laughing like crazy, more like an inhuman cackle. We all take a step back, airborne number two and I unsling our rifles while my buddy grabs his MG. Buddy shouts, drop that rifle and get the hell on the ground, we're calling the sheriff's department. We all think he's an inbred axe murderer or something. Airborne number two is known for being a ballsy dude, makes a grab for his rifle. Suddenly he just isn't there. Scan right. Scan left. He's six inches to my left grinning at me his mouth looks like it grew two inches wider eyes are all red like all of his blood vessels popped arms are hanging like six inches past the end of his uniform sleeves dive backwards onto ground and fire a blanket him simultaneously flash blinds me for a fraction of a second work the bolt on my rifle furiously about to fire another shot before i realize he's gone we all scan He's now in a bush about 10 meters to our 130. All three of us light them up. At this point, the other six guys in our unit are out of their tents. What the hell are you doing you goddamn, what the hell is that? Dude is hunched over, heaving like he's about to throw up. Bolts back up, lets out a guttural scream. Says, in what I can only compare to a mimicry of human speech ah, I am gonna get you, you crawled sons of bitches. Everyone else scrambles for their guns and starts firing. Our sniper produces the .44 revolver he carries for bear defense. Fires a live round at the thing as it just stands there. It curls over from the impact, howls in pain, and dashes out into the bushes uphill to our right. We all march over, weapons raised, to check if there's any blood. No fucking blood. Our guy is adamant that he hit it. We search around in the bushes and eventually find the rifle and helmet it took from the real Tim. Find the bandolier torn off a little farther up, with a bullet hole in it. Guttural screaming from what sounds like maybe 30 meters away. We all fucking book it back to the campsite, just as the rest of the Americans are arriving. American sergeant walks up, fuming. Hey, thanks for waking us all up with your drunken bullshit. Tim Actual is there too, wrapped in a blanket and wearing someone's spare boots. Sergeant notices we're all pale as hell. Cools off a bit. You guys alright? You look a bit shaken up. Describe situation to him as MG Buddy breaks out his Motorola Micro TAC and calls 911. Wait for Sheriff to arrive. Form defensive perimeter and fix bayonets. Wait for Sheriff to arrive. We hear the sirens in the distance, sprint the full mile to where the road ends. Arrive with rifles slung and hands up. Three squad cars, five deputies plus the sheriff step out. All are armed with shotguns. Get the feeling that this has happened before. They politely ask us to unsling and put down our weapons. We reluctantly comply. They tell us that they'll escort us up to our camps, and that we need to take down our tents pack up, and get out of the area immediately. Sheriff explains as we walk that they get a few calls like this every year. The thing has never hurt anyone yet. Yet. They've been trying to get the whole area closed off and clear cut. Forest Service doesn't see shape-shifting murder demons as a good enough reason. To hell with the Forest Service. Get back to camp, pack up. Do the same at the American camp. Hear that same guttural scream, really really close. Sheriff and deputies start emptying shotguns towards the noise. Screams continue. We all book it back to the car slash jeep slash kuba wagon. Hurl our gear into the cars, screams still coming closer. Start cars. As we're turning around, headlight beams illuminate the thing standing in the middle of the trail, twitching. Deputies lean out of their car windows and fire the rest of their ammo at it as we collectively get the hell out of Dodge. About two more miles down the road, Sheriff signals for us to pull over. 
explains the whole Wendigo legend to us. Tells us I'm not saying that that's what you saw up there, but if I were you, I wouldn't go back there if you gave me a million dollars. Sagely advice. Me, Buddy and our two other tagalongs stop in at a diner to get coffee and discuss. We can figure out no rational explanation. Americans lost about $400 to $500 worth of gear up there. Drive home is uneventful, unable to sleep that night though. Never return to that godforsaken place, continue reenacting elsewhere.